Yes, I cut my hair, which is going to be kind of weird for some people because in the next videos that I post, I'm going to have longer hair and facial hair because I filmed those videos back in October, so I'm going to freak people out. Hey everyone, David here with my much more up-to-date review of episode 5 of season 4 of The Walking Dead, Inter Interment, Internment, I keep wanting to say either Interment or Internment, I I think I'm gonna go ahead and assume that it's called internment because tear makes it sound like T E A R is in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and call it internment. And this episode was like two episodes combined into one. It was very much split down the middle in terms of its running time. The first half to me was, I don't wanna say boring, but more of the same stuff that we've seen before. Herschel saying, I gotta help these people in here. Rick saying to Carl, I know you're trying to help, but I can do it on my own, and Carl continuing to insist, saying, I can help, I can help. Maggie, almost much like Carl saying, I want to be in there with you, to, to Herschel, but Herschel says, no, you got to stay out there. They're, they're almost dualities of each other. While people inside the prison are getting sick, they're becoming worse. And uh, an interesting thing, in the last episode, the little girl told Carol, before Carol departed, that... She has not seen anyone actually die, so hopefully that, that that means that people are actually getting better. In this episode, I thought that was actually pretty clever. That's one of the more clever things about... There's actually two interesting things that happened during that first somewhat slow half of this episode. And one of them is that it turns out that Herschel has actually been taking the bodies of the people who have died from the flu off the uh, out of the hall and into a little room where he then puts them down... Uh, before they become walkers. That explains why the little girl has not seen anyone actually dying. So people have been dying by this virus. It's just that Herschel has been keeping people from seeing that, especially the little children. So I thought that was actually rather clever that they explained that from the previous episode. That's something that shows definitely need to do, to kind of hint at something in one episode and make us think like, how can that be possible? And then in the next episode or two episodes later, boom, this is how it happened. It just keeps the momentum of the, momentum of the show going. And I think that The Walking Dead did a really good job with that particular detail. Just notice that I gesticulated a lot. Go ahead and stop. The second interesting thing is that the doctor, the official doctor of the prison, who is now obviously very sick, and you can tell he's just He's gonna go. I mean, even he even turns to Herschel and says, "Take a good look at me." And blood is coming from his eyes and his and his nose and everything. But he pretty much warns Herschel that, "Hey, look at me. This thing is advancing pretty badly. There's gonna be a point where you're just not gonna be able to go to every single one, uh, every single person and take care of them. One of them is gonna die while you're tr treating somebody else, and they're gonna turn and they're gonna rampage through the through the prison. And so." He kind of foreshadows that by showing him that, hey, I got this got this rifle under my bed, you're probably going to need it. And while we're on the subject of bleeding eyes and noses, I find it kind of odd that, and I know why, uh, I'm saying this in a rhetorical fashion, I find it kind of odd that anybody who is 20 or, I'm going to go ahead and say 18 or older, shows these symptoms very drastically. Like, they look like hell, you know, they're coughing up blood, they, they, they're, they're feverish, they're... They look demented. I mean, it's just like the worst possible way to look when you're sick with something like this. It just looks terrible and you feel exhausted, just as exhausted as these people are by just even looking at them, especially Glenn and Sasha, seeing the sweat come off their, their faces and seeing them fumble around, around the halls. I'm just like, oh my God. I, I get reminded of how bad I hate seeing diseases portrayed in, in movies and TV shows, which is another thing that this episode did for me that... I didn't like, but that's more because of a personal uh, thing, and that is hating, uh, hate seeing outbreaks in movies and TV shows, let alone in real life. But that's not exactly a bad thing that counts against the against the show, let alone this episode, because it's making me feel disturbed, and it's supposed to, so that's a good thing. But anyways, I find it kind of odd that anybody who is 18 or over has this, they literally look like hell, whereas all the kids, they look a little pale. They cough every now and then. Okay, so <laughs> if you're a kid, you look beautiful. Or at least as beautiful as you can get while having the flu like this. And like I said, I think I know why. I think they did they did that on purpose to kind of avoid turning off some people. Because there are some people out there who just cannot stand 
watching either a movie or a TV show that has kids put in a life-threatening situation or they look like they're in a life-threatening situation. Gene Siskel from Siskel and Ebert, you know, Roger Ebert's uh, best friend and his partner in crime when it, come, when it came to critiquing movies. He was famous for hating movies that put children in peril. I mean, if a, if a kid was in danger in the movie, automatic thumbs down. So there are people like that, and in order to avoid turning off a particular demographic, The Walking Dead decided to go ahead and make these kids not look like they are about to die and they look like complete and utter shit. So they took that approach. For me, it kind of doesn't sit very well because it kind of takes away from the realism of this world. I kind of preferred that they would have shown some sense. I mean, sure, go ahead and don't show them coughing up blood and looking like they're like that. But go ahead and a little nosebleed. Something tiny like that. That would have been nice, but instead they just look pale and they, like I said, they cough literally in any other scene. But aside from that, they look totally fine. So I didn't like that. But then we hit the halfway mark of the episode and all hell lets loose. I mean, this brought me back to that second episode where just every, all hell broke loose. But to somewhat of a... Uh, physically like in terms of scope it was smaller in size because it was only in a hall and it was literally with about five walkers inside that hall I'll get to the other walkers and by the fence in a second but within that hall there were about maybe five or six walkers that that were the result of people dying from the sickness because Herschel just like the doctor predicted Herschel's attention was on Sasha because he saw her collapse she passed out and because of that, he forgot to lock one of the cells, and because and because he didn't lock one of those cells, somebody who had died from the sickness managed to turn back, turn into a walker, and walk out. But it was still just as intense as that second episode because t <laughs> three of the characters that we care about the most, Glenn, Maggie, and Herschel, are in there. So to see them be put in this kind of peril. I was at the edge of my seat. My, the entire scene, the entire last half of the episode, my jaw was just dropped because, you know, Glenn claps, you know, he he's not breathing like Maggie said. He's turning blue. I mean, I was like, wait, are, okay, are we seriously actually going to lose Glenn? Because like I said, in oh, I think it was the third episode or the fourth when we, we finally saw that Glenn came down with the sickness, I said to myself, I think that might be the death of Glenn when he took that picture because when they take that when they take pictures of their beloveds that's kind of you know that's kind of digging your own grave in a TV show or in a movie because that means you're gonna die so to see that actually happen I'm like oh my god it's actually happening oh my god we're actually gonna lose Glenn and Maggie's in there and we're, we might lose Herschel because my prediction was that Herschel was gonna die and Glenn and Sasha were gonna live because uh, Herschel would have exposed himself to the to the illness and the medicine wouldn't get to him in time. It would get to Glenn and, and, and Maggie, who was also exposed, and to Sasha, who is infected. But it would be too late for Herschel because he's old, because he's incapacitated and everything, and he was exhausted from treating everybody else. I thought he was going to die, but I didn't fear that he was going to die by getting eaten by a walker. So he was put, when he was put in that situation, I was just you know, at the edge of my seat. Go ahead and smack that with the walkers breaching through the fence. I mean, when all of those came on top of uh, Rick and Carl, I was just like, oh my, are you serious? Are you seriously going to make that happen right now when that stuff is happening in the hospital? So it was just a very terrifying, um, a terrifying set of minutes uh, for that latter half of the uh, of this episode. And I thought it was just absolutely great. And it led to a lot of great moments. I mean, I have not seen Carl and Rick be more badass. I mean, we had moments when Carl was a badass, and we had moments where Rick was a badass. But when you put them two together with machine guns taking down a herd of walkers, I was just like, oh my god, Carl, please love your dad from now on. Because you do realize that in this world, your father has achieved Chuck Norris status. I mean, that was just... Amazing seeing the two of them, you know, with machine guns taking them out, helping each other out. It was just one of the most badass moments, and I wouldn't be surprised that that gets nominated for that top five best moments of season four of The Walking Dead on various websites like IGN and Entertainment Weekly or whatever. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if that makes a list because that was actually one of the, my favorite moments of the season thus far. And props for that little girl being very, very brave. I mean, that was that was gutsy. And in a world like the one here in The Walking Dead, being gutsy 
for me, makes the character a lot more likable. So I'm looking forward to seeing more of that little girl. But just in the nick of time, Rick and Carl are able to take out that herd from the fence. Uh, uh, Herschel and Maggie are able to stabilize the Glen with the breather thing. Which, like I said, when when Herschel goes to that walker to take it off out of his mouth, it's just one of the more tense moments I've had in, in, in the season so far. But they manage to rescue Glenn and, like I said, sta stabilize him in the nick of time. And Daryl and Michonne and Tyrese and Stuckey find their way to the prison just in the nick of time. Which, for me, was a little too convenient. I mean, I kind of wish that they would have made it a little more list realistic by having them appear either in the middle of the scuffle or at least an hour or two after the events that just unfolded. I didn't like it how everything just got stabilized and right when that happened, uh, the company arrives with, with the medicine. I thought that was just a little too convenient, but it is a bit of a nitpick. However, the curious thing that this these events did was distract Rick from telling anybody else about Car uh, about Carl about Carol except for Maggie and Herschel. Maggie and Herschel are so far the only people who do know about Carol. So far nobody else knows, especially the two people that we're definitely looking forward to see the reaction, Therese and Daryl. And we're gonna have to wait until next episode. More than likely next episode we'll fi finally find out what their reactions are to the banishment of of Carol. But with all the things that happened in this episode considered I'm, I'm not that necessarily disappointed in not knowing what their reaction is going to be because all this just happened. So it's a good thing to kind of save that for the next episode. That way you have something to do in that next episode. And a few moments ago, I said that I want to see more of that little girl because I now officially like her because of how gutsy she was with that walker. Now I definitely want to see what her reaction is to Rick leaving Carol behind because Carol, I mean, she called Carol mom at the beginning of last, the last week's episode. So... How is she going to react? And the ultimate feeling of the episode by the end of it was just stabilization. Everything was just stabilized. It looked like the crops are gro growing back. Like Herschel said, uh, Glenn has been stabilized. They're taking care of all the walkers and burning them, That especially the ones that have been infected. If Glenn has been stabilized by what appears to be a vaccine that Stuckey managed to create with the supplies they gathered, then hopefully Sasha is also going to be okay and everybody else who got infected is going to be okay, including that, including that little girl. And hopefully after that is uh, done, then Rick will finally get the council together and be like, okay, look, I left Carol behind and then we'll get our reactions. And it looks like the episode makes off with a happy ending. <laughs> Until we get a panning shot of the prison and as we zoom out, we see a figure overlooking the prison. Turns his head 45 degrees to the right eye patch. Well, now, th considering that we had our suspicions, we now know who has been feeding those walkers with the rats leading them to the prison. Five episodes in, and we already have our first glimpse at the governor ever since the ending of season three. And I gotta be honest, I'm a little disappointed. I'm not disappointed of the timing of this brief appearance at the end of the episode. I mean, the fact that they're showing the governor even for literally just a couple seconds at the very end of the fifth episode of a 16 episode season, that kind of says that, hey, we're not uh, pulling any punches here. We're going to go ahead and just speed on through with this season, giving you guys all the great stuff one episode after another. We're not just going to go ahead and put it off all the way until the ending, pushing all these other great concepts that they might have in production to season five because hey surprise surprise we're gonna have a season five of the walking dead no we're gonna start right now there he is the governor what i'm disappointed about though is the presentation i i tweeted this follow me on twitter i tweeted saying that the next time we were gonna see the governor and this was uh before this weekend before this episode of course that the next time we're gonna see the governor he's gonna look like he did in the comics he's gonna have the long hair the beard and of course the eye patch but then it shows him and he looks like he did at the end of season three, and if not, I'm not mistaken, it's been at least a good maybe what three, four months since the events of the finale for season three. So I was really hoping for not only some realism to his to how he visually looks, but also as a service to the fans, having him look like he does in the comics, long hair, beard, uh, eye patch. That would have been awesome, especially since when it panned to him, if he has the long hair, people are going to be like, who's that guy? And it isn't until he turns that they'll see the iPads and be like, it's him. That would have been just 
an awe-inspiring awe-inspire, uh, moment. It would have been amazing. But no, he looks exactly like he did at the end of Season 3. Granted, he probably went back to Woodbury and gathered his razor because chances are he was still there, so maybe that explains why he's so well-groomed. But me, personally, I would have loved to have seen him like he does in the comics. Long hair, beard, uh, eye patch. I can't wait to say mustache. That would have been awesome, and it would have been a great nod to the fans of the comics. Still, I thought this was a rather significant step up over last the last episode. I thought that it was mainly a character progression. Not not a whole lot happened except seeing the the relationships that uh, evolved between Rick and Carl. I mean, Rick and Carl, Rick and Carol. <laughs> the relationship between Rick and Carol, and then seeing the the character development with Stucky, despite my feelings about it and how Daryl reacted to that, as well as Michonne. But here is where they brought back what I loved about that second episode in this season. Even though it was mainly just the latter half of the episode, and the first half was a little bit of repetition in terms of Herschel telling Maggie to stay away, uh, Rick telling Carl to stay away, even though it did uh, illustrate two interesting things. The Doctor saying that, hey, this is going to happen foreshadowing in that foreshadowing kind of way, and uh, the explanation as to why the girl has not been seeing anybody die because Herschel has not been letting it happen. But the latter half of the episode did for me. I really loved it. So I'm going to go ahead and give episode 5 of season 4 of The Walking Dead internment an 8.8 .8 out of 10, which is a B plus. Hopefully the resurgence of the governor means that he's ready to make his next move and smoke him out. And maybe that means that we're going to finally move away from the prison to a whole new environment. Definitely a change very welcome to season 4 after having spent the entirety of season 3 in the prison. I'm welcome to a little change in the in, in the setting. But what did you guys think of episode 5 of season 4 in tournament? Let me know in the comments below if you can because Google Plus has been fucking up these comments. And thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next time.